Welcome everyone to the Midlife Reinvention Podcast, a podcast for women in transition in their careers and life. I'm your host, Kavita Ahuja, and my goal with this podcast is to inspire you to realize your true inner power and potential and to help you unleash all that resides within you and bring it out into the world with confidence. This week, I'm super excited to have on the show Marie Jerusalem. Marie is the CEO and co-founder of Rocket 50, which is a global platform that provides the tools, resources, and services that people need to succeed in their work and life after 50. A serial entrepreneur over the last four years, Marie has also founded Wise Force Advisors, an age management consultancy together with her husband, and Advantage AR, a consultancy focused on HR services for startup technology companies. She was born and raised in San Francisco and currently lives in Dusseldorf and San Francisco with her husband and two dogs. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for being on, on the podcast, Mary. I hope you're doing well today. I am. Thank you. That's great. I was curious. I know we talked a little bit this earlier, but I was wondering how you managed going from California to Germany with your two dogs. And <laughs> that must be uh, interesting. I know I have one dog, so it, I traveling with the dogs is, is a little hard, but I guess you said that you have a, a dog sitter. So <laughs> I have a dog um, sitter. Oftentimes we take them too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One goes under the plane and the other goes in the plane. Oh, so, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. Because that's a long distance. Well, that's great. So it's just such a pleasure to have you. I know that we've um, talked uh, a little bit. We've we met before and we've talked a lot about your wonderful platform, Rocket 50. But I'd, I'd like to really kind of understand from your perspective, you know, your story a little bit. And as I mentioned in your profile or your your bio, you do come from a counseling and psychology background, educational background, and you've had years in senior leadership roles and founding and managing partner in several global organizations. And so tell us, if you would, how your journey in your previous corporate career and how has that prepared you to launch Rocket Fit Fit? And what were some of the main reasons and driving forces behind that? Sure. I had a really long background also in HR. I would say that was probably the longest tenure roles that I had in senior HR. Uh-huh. And so having been a career person my whole life, I mean, starting in my first job in 30 and really being focused on the career ladder, moving up, being the originally the youngest woman always and the only woman on, in many scenarios. I think later in life, I just reached a point where a couple of things happened. One is I, I started realizing I don't really value the things that I had valued for a long time. I think it was probably in my late 40s and 50s that I started to recognize that I didn't really care anymore <laughs> about the things okay. that a lot of the men in particular really cared about in terms of competing and getting bigger and bigger roles. And so I started to, yeah, to not be as engaged, I would say, in the whole corporate scene. And I think I, if I'm really honest, I started to also feel that I was maybe not as relevant myself being older. I think I started to feel, yeah, like a little bit like people would, I don't want to say exclude me, but I just started to feel like I was not as relevant maybe mm-hmm. as I was when I was, was a bit younger. Right. And so it was kind of a coming together of two things, recognizing that I no longer valued it. And then also that maybe the company didn't also value me as much. So I'm, I don't know what comes first, because sometimes mm-hmm. maybe we lose our passion. And then mm-hmm. therefore, the company also senses that. that yes. could, and so you, you start to realize that, that this is just not what you want to keep doing mm-hmm. anyway. And so I left my last role as a chief people officer. And that's when I decided to start my own my own ventures. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of passion for a lot of topics. And one of the things I really had a passion for was what do people do when they're over 50? Because I think a lot of us that get older, we don't think about staying on the job for the next 20 years, but we definitely know we want to keep doing things. (laughs) And so (laughs) that's what I, what I figured that a lot of people must be like me that also want to do a lot. And then when I started looking at the overall demographics about how many older people there are in the world over 50, I thought, wow, this is really a potential business opportunity because there's a lot of people out there that want mm-hmm. to keep doing stuff, but, mm-hmm. but they don't know what to do. Yes, so that was what, exactly. 
kind of born the idea of of Wise Forest and Rocket 50. Yeah. It's such an interesting stage, isn't it? This this 50-ish age that you're right. I mean, we we're not done yet. <laughs> we have so much more ahead of us. And and I love how you talked about the couple of words that popped really resonated with me are the values and the passions because your values changed and and it didn't align probably anymore with what your career was and maybe even what the company was standing for. Or, and then as a result, your passion for it kind of changed. And then it's like, what what is my passion now? And that's what I always really try to encourage with my clients. It's like, what is, we all have changing values and how do we incorporate those changing values into what we're doing next? And, and what are you really passionate about? So and you're right. Like I saw, I felt the same way when I turned 50. I, I was in the corporate career as well. So I completely relate to to your journey. And there was, I saw so many other people who were in the stage. It's like so much potential ahead of us. So that's, that's fantastic. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing that. So I always like to ask of everyone who comes on this podcast, we, as women, especially, there's a lot of obstacles that come in our way in our minds that can be in our minds or there can be outer obstacles that kind of prevent us from moving forward. And I'm I'm sure you had some of those, maybe you could share some of what those are that, that you faced in your journey and how would you perhaps advise people who are listening, like who want to do something new or want to change or want to explore passions, but are blocked in some way. Well, if I'm really honest about my own journey, I would say, One of the most important things is to stop thinking about yourself in terms of retirement, like age and retirement, like just stop thinking about that because Mm -hmm. you start thinking about the society version of retirement and then you start counting the years somehow to retirement. It's really a limiting factor. Like we Mm -hmm. have to stop thinking that things, that things stop at age 60 or 65. I'm 61, and if I was thinking that 65 was somehow an end, then I definitely wouldn't be doing anything I'm doing now. And so what I see from people around me that are doing that sort of counting, oh, 65, whatever that means. I mean, 65 today is not what 65 was for our parents' generation. We live longer, and we need to stay working longer, much more than in the past, because we don't have the societal protections and pensions and retirement funds and all that stuff anyway. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think we just have to stop thinking about 60, 65, 70 being some kind of a ending yes. and rather, rather just go fully with what we're passionate about and, and stop measuring or comparing ourselves to others at other, at other ages. I mean, 60, 50, 60, we're really the best best that we've ever been in terms of our knowledge Mm. and experience and expertise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. we can't compare ourselves to younger people because younger people may have more energy, but we do things twice as fast because of our knowledge and experience. Experience. Yeah. I think we just need to stop comparing ourselves and stop counting the years. Yes. So would you say that that's something that you like you ever did or is that, was that ever an obstacle in your, in your mind or in world, you start thinking about it because, well, you start thinking about retirement because that's a big thing in the corporate world still. I mean, yes. so-and-so is going to retire. Oh, they retired. And in places like Germany, they even have fixed contracts where when you get to the age 60, you're actually let go at age 60. Really? Do that in oh, America. I didn't know that. Okay. But in Germany, when you sign up for a job and you could be a lawyer, a doctor, a consultant, it's built into your contract that you will leave that company at age 60. Oh, I didn't um, know that. So okay. That's something I think that needs to change. But sure. But, but in America, there's a lot of ageism too, just that, oh, you're older and, and the company thinks that you're retiring. So they stop investing in you. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that lack of investment starts as early as 47 or 50 Mm-hmm. And then you find yourself drifting in an organization for the next 10 years. Yes. And then, of course, you're not happy because you're not feeling very fulfilled or having a sense of purpose. Yeah. And I think that, that comes across or reinforces the company stereotype mm-hmm. that you're someone who's no longer engaged. So therefore, we should let them go in the next redundancy. 
Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I saw a lot of that as a senior HR person. When we made our list of people that we were going to let go, they were often older people that were making a lot of money because through tenure, you tend to make a lot more money. Yeah. But but then we said, oh, but that person is not really engaged anymore, or they're sick all the time, or they're out, or they're on vacation all the time. They're not really the people we want to keep. So it's really a, a vicious cycle. And I, yes. I do think it starts a lot in corporations because corporations still have the old mindset that you will leave the company yourself in the, in your 60s. Mm-hmm. So they don't invest anymore. Right. So Huh. Yeah. So from your experience, Maria, are you do you think that this this ageist kind of attitude in society and in, in companies and in workplaces has it improved at all? Is it are they still I know that you you're a vast experience in HR, especially you you've but is it do you think that it's becoming more known and is it is it improving at all? If it's becoming any at at all better, it's only just starting right now. Yes, and, yes. Um, as I mentioned, the other company that my husband and I found is called Wise Force Advisors, and we work with companies to help them with their age management practices. Oh, and okay. I will say that it's new for a lot of companies, the idea of thinking about age. So every company has a diversity and inclusion initiative, mm-hmm. but they don't focus on age. Mm-hmm. And in America, for sure, too, they don't focus on age. They only mm-hmm. focus on other things around diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. Age management is not a diversity initiative. It's something different. It's really looking after the well-being of your older workforce. Mm -hmm. And it's also about hiring them and having looking after their careers well into Mm -hmm. their 70s. So it's a different mindset. But Mm -hmm. it's so you ask if it if it's changing, I don't think I think only now is it changing because companies are recognizing that they have an older workforce they can't just fire everybody because there's not a lot of young people to replace them. Right. And so with the experience and knowledge, right. As well. Yeah. yeah. I'm starting to realize they have to keep their older people employed for much longer. Yes. And yes. So maybe now they're starting to think about what that means, but, but mm. there's just this old, old narrative. 65, yeah. you're going to retire. Where did that even come from? <laughs> you know, that, that, that age 65, right. I think it's so funny. As you, uh, Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, I, I was just, um, I've been in this kind of this role for uh, many years now. And I, I've noticed that in the media also, it's it's actually becoming more known. Like people are talking about ageism. And uh, for example, there there's, I don't know if you've seen this new Netflix series on, on you know, how to live to 100 and, uh, and the blue oh. zones the blue zones in the world. And, and, and it's really interesting. And I I love that because it shows the different societies and how they view, they respect and acknowledge older people and, and, and the, the contribution they've made. And so it's very different from, from country to country, but I, I think it is, it's slowly happening, but I, I think what you're doing with wise force that's amazing. That's really great. And, and everybody, all the companies have the DNI issues, but do they have the the age initiatives, right? Yeah, and interestingly enough, many companies we found, at least initially in the U.S. in particular, were not interested in it. Oh, really? But I think it's just a question of spend, budget. I think a diversity and inclusion has their own priorities. Mm-hmm. And they don't necessarily want to give up money for, for taking care of older people. Yeah, it will, it will change. I mean, there are going to be, by 2030, there's going to be over 150 million people in the working, over 50 150 million people in the workforce over 50. Really? So okay. there was a big study by Bain that I posted on my LinkedIn. Yes, I saw that. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So Marie, so you've launched a couple of businesses and 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 the mission with, with Rocket 50 is the one that I'd like to speak a little bit about is um, I, I'll read the mission that it is to inspire people over 50 to create and lead their best life after 50 especially when they transition into a new chapter of work and life. I love that because that's actually my mission as well. Like I, I love inspiring people, especially in midlife and beyond. But so, but why is this so important to you? I know that we kind of touched on it a little bit, but is there, why do you think it's so important to, to have this kind of platform? Well, I mean, I fundamentally believe that people over 50 are in an amazing time of their life. I mean, 
So much has transpired. You work so hard, your education, your career, your job, whatever you've been doing, your kids, you've raised kids, they're out of either they're leaving or, or already out of the house. Mm-hmm. And you have this wonderful phase where you can can really live and be your best self. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, I look around and that's not the narrative that I see with so many people. I see people struggling to get another job. Like, I think that's a really top topic, like people that are applying for jobs on LinkedIn or they struggle. They feel like they're being discriminated against for their age. I see people in jobs that are really suffering because they don't feel appreciated or or they don't feel recognized for their contributions that are over 50. I just see a lot of struggle. And yes. I, I I really wish that Rock, what I wish for Rocket 50 is that we help everybody who wants to be helped. We help them get that next job. We help them start their own business. We help them retire with all these amazing ideas that they can do in retirement. And to really have a group of people around them, have a community around them that supports them. Mm -hmm. Because we also see that when people get older, sometimes they get more isolated. Or if they lose their job, then they lose their their network or they lose their community. Mm-hmm. And so we want to provide them also with the, with the network and, and the community and mentors and advisors that are all there to support them. And I think that's how people succeed. They succeed with with having a robust support system around them. And that's mm-hmm. what I want Rocket 50 to be. Mm, I see that you're passionate for it. You just really, you're really yeah. excited. And I, I can just well, see I'm that. Yes, well, I am. Yes. I'm old, but I'm living it. <laughs> you're not. You're, you're. Perfect. <laughs> so while we're on the subject, I guess that's that's an amazing mission. And and so maybe you can tell me what exactly, how exactly do you do that? Like, well, how would Rocket Fifty actually do that in terms of what what services do you provide, what tools do you offer, and, and what what is your vision for it? Well, now that we're oh, you were talking a little bit about that, we have two types of memberships. One is a, a free, completely free, and the other one is a paid membership. Mm-hmm. And so. What we strive for is that for a very low fee of just twenty seven eighty eight per month, that you get all the tools and resources that you need to really get that next job, or to stay really to stay vibrant and to stay fully active on the job you have. I was a career coach for many many years, and also, and what I realized is that a lot of people they kind of lose their mojo or they feel like they're losing their mojo when they're older. And I would like them, and with with Rocket 50, you'll find the tools that you need and the resources and and maybe you'll attend events or do some of our learning courses or belong to a group or just whatever it is that you need to keep you really engaged in whatever it is you want to do next. So our Mm -hmm. tagline is to discover what's next. And uh, we, we believe that from 50 to 100, that there's a lot of new phases in your life that will come up. And for every phase, staying on the job, getting a job, starting a business, becoming a consultant, retiring, becoming a real estate agent, or all the things that you'll do in retirement. (laughs) (laughs) I think they'll they'll find those things. (laughs) I like how you put that. (laughs) That's So true. And I, I think I love that because I, it's so important when you're talking about isolation and all that. I think it's so important to have a personally a community to belong to. You also see, get motivated and you have kind of accountability, whether it's in, with coaches or other people that are in the community and and constant learning and development, which is, keeps you motivated and, and excited maybe even for your next stage, right? So that's what you really want is to not be like what you said, losing your mojo, but actually like maybe this is the best view it as the best, best stage in your life. Right. And that's why I I actually call my program. It's my time now because (laughs) it is, it is our time now to really, really to rediscover ourselves. So I love, I love that. That's really great. I mean, there Um, are other networks out there, but I think when you join the network of everybody 50 plus, then you get a chance to really be with similar people that are having similar life experiences, which I think Mm -hmm. makes a difference. Yeah, absolutely. That's wonderful. 
So if we were just kind of maybe go back to your experience and it takes a lot of courage to change kind of our life, kind of the tra- trajectory of our life and go through these transitions of going from corporate to starting your own business or, or other, other challenges that we all face as in through different transitions in our life. So how did you develop this courage kind of to, to do that and what motivates you to move forward really? Well, I would say it's definitely not a straight line. So yeah. you definitely go from quitting your corporate job and starting something and having it be just seamless. It's um, something that you have to first recognize and find your passion. A lot of people don't quite know what their passion is. And so I think you have to you have to get clear on what that is. In Rocket 50, we offer assessments, for instance, for people to figure it out. So in the first instance, f- figure it out. Like, well, what is it that you you would be passionate about, or you think you would be passionate about? Is it the environment? Is it animals? Is it people, things? Mm -hmm. Like discover that passion and then talk to other people about it. Find out what other people are doing. Get up to date, like discover what, what other people, what other people are doing that are similar to what you'd like to do. And then once you've identified it, then really make a plan for yourself and figure out a way to make money. And sometimes you don't make money right away. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes you don't make money for a couple of years even, mm-hmm. but, but that should be part of your planning. So when you first leave a job, sometimes people have a little bit of buffer and that's really a good time to, to kind of f- figure that out. I think you have to give yourself a couple of years to get to a place where you might start to make revenue. Mm-hmm. It's not realistic to think that you're going to right away make money. Right. So like, maybe you do some interim work, maybe you pick up a, a job that doesn't require a lot of energy, like be a barista in star- Starbucks or something, but <laughs> yeah. just something to kind of tide you over while you kind of develop and, and start to become that thing that you want to become. Mm-hmm. And it really needs to be your guiding light where your passion comes from. And just stay focused on that kind of North Star, like this is what mm-hmm. I believe in, this is what I want to do, and surround yourself with people who who are like you, who who believe in the things that you believe in. You'll find a lot of people, a lot of friends and former colleagues and others that don't really support you in a way. Because my theory is people that stay in jobs they don't like are very threatened by people who do things different. And so you really have to surround yourself with people who really believe in you and and support you and develop the right support system. That's really important. Yes. And just keep going. Like don't yes. don't lose it. Don't and you don't expect, like I said, that it's all gonna be smooth. You're gonna definitely have ups and downs. And sometimes you're gonna wonder like what the hell am I doing kind of days. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. Just, yeah. <laughs> Like, did that did that happen doing? to you? Marie? did you like did you I mean I know that I experienced this. Like I I felt like people were there was a lot of maybe a lot of judgment and like why is she doing this because everything seems perfect with her situation. She has this great job and like she's doing so well and why would she change? So there's a lot of that judgment and maybe not a not a lot of support either like you were saying. So I can relate to that. Did, I, did you experience that as well or it's funny, like like they, they say out loud, um, why is she doing that? Or why is she doing that? But what they say sometimes and, and other times don't say, why is she doing that at that age? Yes, yeah, they, yes. Why is she doing that at that age? She should be retiring. Like, why doesn't she just retire and go off into the yeah, sunset? Right. So this is the thing, why, why we have to break through all these barriers. We have to break through the understanding of, of, of companies, we have to break through the understanding of our own friends and family sometimes that, yes. that it's that we have, that we're not held back by all of these preconceived notions about age. Mm-hmm. And even within ourselves, I think maybe ourselves are the biggest barrier, like, like we should be doing this or that by this age. We're mm-hmm. going to live much longer than our parents ever lived. Our lifespan is much longer than it used to be. And so if you retire at 65, you're going to be retired for 30 more years, potentially. Yes. So it doesn't make sense anymore. So we have to break through these old stereotypes, these old myths and understanding about what age is and just Mm -hmm. do what you love to do. Do what you're passionate about and don't let the years that you are get in the way. Yes. 
That's such great advice. And it's so true. I mean, I, there's a couple of things you said before that I kind of want to go back to. You, you said that you can take, like, it doesn't mean that you leave something and then you have to like, let everything go. Like you can do interim things. Like, and, and a lot of people that come to me say, you know, I'm, you know, I want to leave, but I, yeah, I need to get another job, right? Another job right away. And it's like, well, give yourself some time, like figure it out. Like you can do a fun thing. You can be a barista. You can do these things until you really have, create that vision of what, who you really want to be. And, I, and that was another thing that you said is have that vision. And that's, that's so important to really visualize yourself. And like, where do you, who do you want to be influencing? What difference do you want to make in the world? Like, and and when you have that as your guiding light, then you can make plans towards it. But it doesn't have to be the next day. It takes it can take a little while, so you have to be patient and have take the little the little steps. And don't be afraid of losing the skills that you gained all those years, because mm-hmm. all of the skills I gained over all those years, thirty years of working in the corporate world, I use all those skills. Mm-hmm. I, I use them all the time. I mean, we we might lose the the title. Or we might lose some status that we're not this or that. Mm-hmm. But, but what we gain is something so much richer than all of the people working in corporations that are are really unhappy, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's this richness of life that you gain, and that's what you take until your end. And I think that's more important yes. than yes. status. Yeah. Yeah, so true. That's that's one of the things is the basis is like identify your skills because we have so much that we have so much so many skills so much experience that we've gained and it doesn't mean you have to let go of it I mean you can apply them in so many different roles and even uncovering things that you never even thought you could do like I never thought I could be a podcast host 10 years ago (laughs) like are you kidding me (laughs) and here I am so it's and it's eye-opening and it's invigorating and it's really exciting. So I, I love that. Yeah, Wonderful. I mean it's a journey. It is, yeah. Rocket 50 is it was a journey. I mean, it it, it didn't happen overnight. It, it had one idea and another idea, and then that idea evolved to another idea and then mm-hmm. another idea, and then eventually something was born out of it. But it's really a process. Wonderful. And so tell me a little bit more about what your vision is for Rocket 15 and the future and anything that you want to more that you want to share about it or any any other maybe advice that you have for people who are approaching 50 or over 50, who are maybe going unsure of what to do next. And I want everybody over 50 to feel like this is an amazing time of their life and they can do anything they want if they have the support and tools that they need to get there. And I wish that Rocket 50 will provide all of the tools and resources that people need to get there. And if we don't have it, then I would love for people to join join and tell us what mm-hmm. we need to do. So it's not just a one-way street. Like I would love everybody to come to us and tell us, this is what we need. This is what you need to do, Marie, at Rocket 50 to, to, to help us be the best we can be. And so we're just starting off on our journey of providing what we think at the outset are tools that people will find helpful. But I would love for people in the community to tell us what what you need and what resources and what are the things that would make it really amazing for you. And that's what we'll work for, because our mission is to be the place for people over 50 to find what they need. That's amazing. That's really great. I love that you are gaining feedback and and working on it with your your community. And it's like, what do you need? Like, often we don't ask that enough. And I'm excited to be a part of it too as an advisor. <laughs> Thank you for for We're asking me to, to have you as an yes. advisor on our platform. That's yes. amazing because it's it's all about amazing people, and we want to have just an amazing community of people. I mean, yeah. people are people help people. That's how we get things done. Yes. Absolutely. And I understand that you're kind of relaunching your website. And uh, uh, so that's coming up soon. And yep. at the yeah. end of September, I don't know when the podcast will be released, but we're our, at the end of the month, uh, this month, we'll have the whole new look and feel nice. and all our tools and the whole journey starts to, to have the best tools. We already have many tools and many articles and many things happening. But as I yes. said, I, I really wanted to be something that people find what they need. Mm -hmm. And so if they don't find what they need, then just tell me, 
join yes. a free member and tell me what you need. Right. <laughs> Um, and so maybe you could tell us, uh, Mary, how we find, how our listeners find you and Rocket 50 and just how they can get involved. Yeah. Well, just if you just Google Rocket 50, you'll find us. Mm-hmm. So we're at rocket50.io and or just type in Rocket 50 and you'll come to our site. Mm-hmm. And once there, then you can choose the, the, the membership. You can either join on a limited basis as a free member or you can join as a as a subscriber and mm-hmm. then you would pay a monthly fee and then you would have full and 100% access to everything that we're doing as part mm. of your monthly subscription. Mm. And, and that's I, a very reasonable yeah. rate. I, I, yeah, I think you mentioned earlier, it's, it's good to reasonable rate. And I think for all that you seem to be providing, it's, it yeah. seems to be a 20, very robust. The rate is twenty seven eighty eight per month. Yeah. And I, I think it's very fair. I mean, having been, been out there and in, in the HR and career field all these years, I think it's a fair price and mm-hmm. you can join it for as long as you need and mm-hmm. get what you need, but hopefully you'll continue on. And as even after you get whatever it is you're doing, we hope yes. you'll stay on. Yes. And also yes. give back. I think that there's an, a lot of opportunity to be a mentor or to come on as an advisor or when you launch your own new business, you can also promote your business through Rocket. Mm-hmm. We're a global platform. And so we are also going to have a, a very robust marketplace. Right. So you can offer your own services and products Amazing. Through, through our marketplace as well. Right. Well, that sounds fantastic. And I'm excited to be a part of it. And I, I think it's really needed. And I, I especially now, as you said, it's an aging population, aging workforce, and there's going to be so many people who are in this in this stage of life in the in the workforce. So I think it's a great resource. And thank you for sharing that. And is there anything you might want to just end off with or say to the audience and people who are in the stage of life that we find ourselves in? <laughs> if you're in this if you're over 50 and you have any doubts about your future, join Rocket 50 or or call Kavita. <laughs> <laughs> You can get whatever it is you want. You just need to take the steps to get there. So you may not know now, mm-hmm. but you can take the steps to know, and then you can launch yourself into whatever it is you want to do. And I I think that we, two women sitting right here in front of you, are really good <laughs> examples of finding your passion. And I can only say that when you get there, it's an amazing place to be, and it's worth all the effort. Oh, it certainly is. It, it's not a, like you said, it's not a straight line, but it's so rewarding, right? It's, it's so rewarding at the end of the day that to be doing things that you're passionate about and that, that make you want to get up in the morning. So exactly. <laughs> <laughs> loved having you on. Thank you so much, Marie, okay. and uh, look forward to seeing the updated site and looking forward to contributing as well. Thank you very much for inviting me. You're welcome. Okay.